Hi, so far we discussed uh, various alternate methods of uh, integrated pest management uh, technologies uh, which uh, can be used uh, in uh, the uh, farmers uh, practice. You know all these uh, alternative methods uh, we started thinking mainly because of uh, the misuse or the overuse or the indis indiscriminate use of uh, insecticides or the pesticides. So, that has led to the thinking of uh, the alternative means of uh, the pest management, but even today as a curative means chemical control still forms the major weapon in IPM. So, this we have to remember well in advance. Let us discuss how this chemical control vis a vis the IPM can be made use, what needs to be done for using chemical pesticides what are the strategies to be considered, what are the points to be remembered we should discuss in the next 2 to 3 classes. Yeah, I said you know chemical control and the IPM we may have to relate in the future 2 to 3 classes. What is chemical pest control? The basic question we have to answer. It is nothing but using chemicals for controlling the insect pests in this case. And it is a pesticide used to prevent or destroy or to repel the insect pests from the source of the food here the host plants or the crop plants. They also combat the pests and diseases occurring on our crops not only on our crops even on livestock and also on our possessions including the stored products. Before going further we should know what is the history of these pesticides. Before the synthesis of uh, new insecticides, the inorganic pesticides were in use. If you see the history as back as in 1867, Paris green was used for the management of Colorado potato beetle in USA. Similarly, in 1892, the various arsenic compounds, lead arsenate was first used against gypsy moth control which is a, which is a temperate uh, tree plant in USA. In 1936, lethane was used for many of the foliage feeding uh, uh, insects management. In 1940, the synthesis of uh, the new insecticides started. After identifying uh, the DDT insecticidal activity during 1939, later on one after the other many molecules started synthesizing which included majority of fluorinated hydrocarbons which include as I said the insecticidal property of DDT was identified in 1939, then came lindane, then came chloridane, dialdrine and heptachlor. Later on in 1946 organophosphates having a quick knockdown effect on the insects were synthesized. Some of the important organophosphate insecticides are melathion, parathion, dichlorovas and metosis tox. Later in 1956, another group of insecticides, carbamates, having a stable compound, having a quick knockdown effect on majority of the insects were synthesized. Carbamates included aldicarb, methomyl, carbaryl, uh, pyrimicarb and so on. Then came the synthesis of uh, uh, formamidins in 1965. One of the best example in under this group is Amitraz which has got a very broad uh, spectrum uh, insecticidal activity particularly effective against the sucking pest complex of majority of the field crops. Then came a striking uh, phenomena in 1972 that is the identification of synthetic pyrethroids. They are more stable photostable compounds and they are required in very low quantity as against the earlier conventional insecticides and they are very effective for biting and chewing insects on various crops. Under this category bioresimethrin, alethrin, palmethrin, deltamethrin, cypermethrin these are the important compounds which are in use even today. Then from 1992 onwards there was a major development in the synthesis of newer insecticides belonging to newer chemistry class altogether they belong to newer chemistry classes. Some of the newer uh, insecticides include neonicotinoids, insect growth regulators, spinosins, 
fifronols, avermectins having a major activity on biting and chewing insects, uh, oxidizants, then pimetrazone, diamides, phenylpyrazoles, tetrazines, ketanols, these are some of the insecticides belonging to a newer class of uh, pesticides. Broadly, we can group them into three phases as far as the age of pesticides is concerned. One is uh, the ancient era of uh, traditional approach wherein uh, from ancient days uh, till uh, 1938 which included cultural and mechanical methods, botanicals which included neem, chrysanthemum, rotinone, tobacco and so on and uh, the basic inorganic insecticides belonging to arsenic compounds, mercury compounds, tin compounds having a direct uh, mortality effect on the insecticides. Then came the era of doubt after the synthesis of uh, the various insecticides may starting from chlorinated hydrocarbons particularly between 1962 to 1975 lot of discoveries were made with reference to various uh, in, uh, chlorinated carbons and the resistance problem was another thing which was noticed during this period and a lot of organochlorines, organophosphates and synthetic pyrethroids were synthesized and um, almost to the tune of 80 percent of the farmers dependent for their management of crop pests on these synthetic insecticides. Because of the indiscriminate use, the problem of resistance came, the problem of residue problems came and more important the problem of health hazards to a human being and also to other higher animals was seen in almost all the places across the globe. So, the concept or the third phase era of IPM started from 1976 onwards. Particularly the IPM uh, became uh, more important with uh, the Hufaker project in USA and also in Southeast Asia on, the, on rice the FAO IPM program which gave a boost in our country for developing IPM strategy on various uh, field crops. If you understand the pesticide usage across the globe, you know so far 260 pesticides have been registered so far and almost around 585 formulations are available as on recently that is August 2015. And the pesticide consumption interestingly in our country India is very low compared to some of the countries abroad. In fact, Taiwan records uh, almost 17 uh, kg of pesticide per hectare and then followed by China, Japan, USA wherein uh, India consumes hardly 0 0.6 uh, kg of um, pesticides per hectare. Because we have large area under uh, dryland condition, the uh, consumption goes so low. But if you take uh, the pesticide consumption in irrigated area particularly in uh, rice growing areas, in cotton growing areas, the pesticide consumption is almost 10 kgs per hectare. So, the separate estimation the government of India has made very recently. Then if you take the information on crop wise data in the country, cotton 50 percent consumes 50 percent of the pesticides followed by paddy and fruits and vegetables. Then if you just analyze the pesticide consumption within the country, of course undoubtedly Andhra Pradesh takes around 24 percent of the pesticides followed by Maharashtra, then Punjab, then almost Karnataka and Gujarat takes 7 percent, remaining states consume the remaining percentage of pesticides. Again the Indian scenario if you observe because uh, ours is a tropical and subtropical um, country wherein insects play a major role rather than the other pest problems. Uh, uh, almost around 80 percent of insecticides are uh, consumed out of the pesticides that we use followed by herbicides. Of course, in recent years the percentage of usage of herbicide is increasing season after season mainly because of uh, the labor problem followed by fungicides and all other pesticides put together they contribute around 3 percent of the consumption. 
if you compare this with the world consumption of uh, pesticides, it is altogether different. Across the world, you know, it is herbicides which dominate the consumption, almost 47.5 percent of herbicides are used, followed by insecticides which consume around 29.5 percent, then followed by fungicides and then rest of the other uh, pesticides. These pesticides are classified according to various means. Firstly, they are classified based on uh, the usefulness. Pesticides belonging to acaricides which kill ticks and mites, for example, carbophenthion. Pesticides named as insecticides, mainly they act on insects, carbofuron, chlorpyrifos, some of these insecticides are in, in, in included under this category. Then fungicides, mainly effective against the fungal diseases, carb, uh, mancozeb, carbondizem and so on. Then pesticides as herbicides, mainly acting on weed fauna, in that you know 2,4-D, butachlor, then nematicides, mainly acting on nematodes, Phenomo, uh, phenomifos is one of the standing example we have. Then pesticides as rodenticides, which kills rats as invertebrate pests. Comarin is one of the commonly seen uh, rodenticide. Then based on the mode of action, how exactly they act on the insects, they are classified. They are classified as contact poison, for example, carbaryl. Whenever these insecticide come in contact with the insect, particularly the cuticulin layer, because of the wax layer present in the cuticular layer of the insect, it absorbs the insecticide, then it results in death of the insect. Then stomach poison, mainly zinc phosphide, you now here the insects have to feed on the treated surface that is on the plant surface or on the fruit surface and whenever the material goes inside, then it acts as a stomach poison. Then systemic poison, in this case whenever the insecticide is sprayed onto the treated surface, the plants, the whole plant becomes poisonous the phloem and xylem is contaminated with the poisonous material and whenever the insect feeds either by sucking or by feeding on the foliage, the insect will be killed. And then as fumigants, the, as the name itself indicates, the insect spiracles, whenever the insects respire, these fumigants enter into the insect body and the insect will be killed. Then based on the chemical constituents, the pesticides are classified as botanical compounds and then as synthetic organic compounds which are synthesized based using many of the chemical groups and then as microbial compounds particularly uh, from various microbes like bacteria, fungus, nematodes, viruses the classification is made and then insect growth regulators particularly using a molting hormone zoonal hormone compounds, these uh, molecules are included under this category. Synthetic pyrethroids, because they are mainly photostable and required in low quantity having low mammalian toxicity. These classification of uh, the conventional or the old insecticides in broad can be made as organochlorines, as organophosphates and then carbamates and then synthetic pyrethroids having some of the examples shown there. The major drawback of these uh, old chemicals are the conventional insecticides as I said repeatedly because of the problem of uh, residues. The residues remain for a long time on the treated surface. Whenever the human being or the higher animals consume, the residual toxicity results in uh, various health problems. And then the problem of insecticide resistance because of overexposure or repeated exposure to the same molecule, the insect gets acclimatized to the toxic of the particular insecticide and they develop many behavioral as well as physiological mechanisms to overcome the toxicity. And then the resurgence, you know, because of use of these broad spectrum insecticides, majority of the insects and their natural enemies, maybe parasitoids, maybe predators will be killed. In the absence of these natural enemies and also in the absence of uh, toxic residues, 
the same species will come back again and cause major economic damage which is known as the resurgence problem. In addition to that we also see secondary pest outbreaks, the minor pests becoming major pests particularly in case of cotton because of the continuous use of synthetic pyrethroids. We have seen a minor pest like cotton whitefly assuming the status of a major uh, uh, pest in uh, recently in uh, Punjab and Haryana area. So here the secondary outbreak is seen because of the continuous use of synthetic pyrethroids. Then coming to new class of pesticide synthesis wherein uh, the insecticide resistance action committee of Washington they grouped all these new insecticide molecules into 24 groups based on chemical nature, based on toxicity of each of the chemical and then uh, say group 2B contains uh, phenyl uh, pyrazoles, 3A contains uh, pyrethroids, 4A contains uh, neonicotinoids like that the list goes on. In fact, 10B contains oxazonols which are important uh, uh, new molecule pesticides. Etoxenol is one of the standing example we have and uh, the group 11A contains uh, all the Bt formulations. The microbial toxins are included under uh, this category and then um, group 13 contains pyro pyrols which are again important uh, sucking pest uh, compounds and then um, group 17 contains triazine which are again recently synthesized molecules and then uh, most important one is uh, group 22A which contains oxidizines. Uh, one of the classic example under this uh, new class of insecticide is indoxacarp which is very effective for the bollworms particularly in cotton ecosystem and then of late diamidines have been synthesized uh, which include flubendamide and then rhinoxophor as one of the standing examples. So again some of the molecules are still undescribed. So they have been grouped under uh, code name UN wherein still the chemistry of this and the toxicity level of this still have to be understood. Under this category there are so many molecules including the dicofol which is one of the old molecule is also included under this and uh, pyridolol is again a new molecule which uh, the toxicity level and the chemical nature of the insecticide needs to be understood. So that is how the new class of insecticides have been classified and they are finding a major role in the insect pest management because of their uh, uh, low mammalian toxicity because of their low quantity usage in the IPM. Thank you.